The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. Um, we'll talk about Pandora's Box uh, projector recalibration tool and the calibration link today. Thomas will help me to answer your questions. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Pari. Hi. Um, so feel free to ask um, everything what is in your mind um, and you can ask in our chat field. Uh, okay, so let's start. Um, with our webinar content. So today um, we will talk about the calibration link device, um, so the input cards, and then we will talk a little bit about the fiber cables and what's important um, to know uh, about them. And um, we will have a little setup here. Um, we will explain the hardware setup first and then we will go into the software and the widget designer and talking about the calibration link and uh, projector recalibration tool in Pandora's box and how to use them. Um, okay, let's start with the calibration link. So as you can see in the picture, um, the calibration link is a net link device um, with two calibration fiber input boards. Um, these input boards allow measuring the light intensity um, levels of a uh, one millimeter fiber cable. The recalibration process is based on um, these measurements. Um, so the quality of um, light transmission affects the um, quality of the process. Um, and um, actually, these cards are analog uh, input boards um, and each board has eight um, 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 connectors um, and these are actually um, they are they um, they are um, detect um, the incoming voltage in a specific um, gradual steps um, providing details, data, information from the connector sensor. Um, in the software, we will get um, a, a value range uh, from 0 to uh, 1,023 uh, if light's coming in. Um, so, um, now let's talk a little bit about the fiber cables. Um, mounting the fiber cables, um, they should be straight to the projector. So um, all of these fiber cables, um, the best way to um, mount them is uh, to mount them uh, in the corner, in each corner of um, the project, uh, projection or um, if you have a panel or um, a screen um, to mount them in, the, in each corner. Um, and they should be looking, they should look straight to the projector. So, um, because they should catch as much light as possible. Um, so that's very important. Um, and you need also a minimum number of four cables, four fiber cables for uh, each projector. So if you have a setup like this, if you have a, um, soft touch blend area and uh, two projectors um, then you can um, use six fiber cables so you can share these two fiber cables um, um, which are in the blend area with um, both of these projectors um, that's possible um, okay so there should be no direct uh, sunlight and um, you shouldn't um, blend or um, break these cables, um, these fiber cables. Um, and um, they should have for each projector um, the same length. Um, so um, if um, they should 
if you choose for a um, length for five meters, then should be all five meters. Um, that's very important. Um, okay, and then how to um, uh, find out the maximum length of the fiber cables? Um, you should um, find out the minimum brightness. Um, so it is just a, a rule um, for the minimum brightness. If you have 10 meters fiber cables, then um, 100 lux uh, should come through. Um, and uh, for 20 meters, 200 lux. Um, but it is only for minimum brightness. So you can also use more lux um, or, or um, yeah, having a better uh, connection for it. Um, the next important thing is that the ends of um, these cables should be clean and cut it. So, um, and, and they should be cut straight um, because, um, yeah, because the light needs to go through these cables and um, it's very important that these cables are clean um, and not avoiding um, the light coming through. Um, and for these kind of setups, um, each projector has to be uh, in a best focus for all fibers. Um, because um, um, we are doing the projector pixels, we are um, recalibrating the projector pixels um, and we are trying to find out the uh, fiber points, the location of the fiber points. This is why they should have the best focus. Um, any questions so far? Mark? No, actually there are no questions yet. Okay. Um, then let's go to our hardware setup for today. Um, I have a little panel here, um, as you can see in the camera, and um, I hope you can see also the black points uh, within each corner. Um, these are the fiber cables um, looking through the panel. Um, the fiber cables are connected to the netlink, um, and the netlink is connected by a network uh, cable into our switch. Then I have a uh, compact player uh, using it as a client, which is connected to the projector. I have actually two projectors. Um, one of uh, one of them is used for the welcome panel, and the other one we will use it for uh, the recalibration. Um, on my laptop, um, I have the budget designer and Pandora's box, so which is talking to um, um, the client, um, and um, so it's a client um, master setup, and. Um, Via network, you will also um, talk to the net link or calibration link. So let's have a look into the widget designer. Uh, first of all, we have to make sure that we are in the same range, network range, um, as a net link. Um, so let's have a look into the nodes, input devices, calibration link, as you can see we have to enter the calibration link um, uh, IP addresses. Um, this is um, the default IP, um, so if you purchase a net link or a calibration link from us it's just default um, 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 default IP will be this, um, but I have changed the default IP in my setup, uh, so I have to make sure that, um, that the widget designer is also in the same um, network range. That's why I have to go to the connection, connection manager and have a look under IP info and setup. The local IP is 
20010. Um, and if it's wrong, then you can um, choose here the correct um, adapter for it. So this is the correct one. Now I will enter my the IP address of the uh, calibration link. It's uh, 20065. Now I can use the connect button to connect the um, netlink with the widget designer. So as you can see, it will be gray and that means that's connected. Um, if you want to change the IP address, you can use um, the change IP button. Um, if you have changed um, 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 input or output board in, um, in the netlink, then you have to configure it again. Um, so this is why we have this configure module. Um, actually, when we are um, when we are giving to you the netlink device, um, these cards are already configured, but if you have changed something, then you have to configure it again to be able to use them in the widget designer. Um, now I can start the data. Um, start data is um, a button for um, um, for um, high data, um, as you can see, the values are uh, jumping. Um, if you have a, a setup um, that you need to use for a um, longer time, then you can use the straight and start integrate button. So you will see the data is coming in, but uh, in a lower um, speed. Um, and stop data means no coming, no incoming um, signals. Um, so let's start this data again. As you can see, um, from number one to eight, um, it's happening. It's nothing happening uh, because no connector is connected there. Um, I have connected my fiber cables, um, four fiber cables. Uh, from 9 to 12. So this is why um, you will see they are um, jumping a lot um, and in higher values. Um, from 13 to 16, it's also nothing connected. But they will still get some light um, if the connectors are not um, closed, not very closed. Um, so you can screw them um, to not getting any signals, um, but um, value is always um, okay to get, um, even if um, the uh, the connectors are closed. So if you do not want to get anything there, you can um, just tape them. Um, okay. Uh, any questions so far? There are only organized uh, questions uh, so far, and yeah, nothing specific for the calibration link yet. Okay. <clears throat> um, store last transmission uh, state to Netlink uh, CPU uh, is a button. If you click it, um, you have to power cycle the device. If you wish that um, it remembers whether it should or it should not send data as soon as it's powered up. And factory reset uh, is if you have changed the IP address of uh, the device, then um, it will just uh, change it to the default IP address. Um, okay, so that's uh, all about the Netlink node. Um, Let's go to our uh, that's one one thing more. Um, you see the values here. Um, if I if I use a 
white oh my god a white picture you will see um the light will be more so um which which are coming to this um camera is not seeing nothing um so and and the signal will be the values will be higher so that's um, because the light is coming into this fiber cables um which are connected to the panel um okay so let's remove this and go back to the widget designer so when we want to use the um, recalibration tool um, in the widget designer we have to make sure that we are connected with Pandora's box because um, we will talk to Pandora's box the first step is uh, before the recalibration uh, we have to Re, uh, we have to warp our panel or our screen manually. Um, so what I have done here uh, in Pandora's box, I have two outputs. Um, the welcome panel um, is where I have the text uh, with um, this projector. Um, this is our first one. So this is uh, my welcome panel mesh file. And um, the second one is the panel output number two. Um, this is what I will use to for, for the recalibration, but it's also warped. So this is number two and one. So let's give a test pattern. To this, I will just turn the opacity so you can see this is the no, uh, output number two, um, which is word here because the layer number five is rooted to camera number two. So that's what we have to do first of all before we start with the recalibration tool um, now we can go into the widget designer under tools tab <coughs> you will find the projector recalibration tool so first of all it's empty um, the first thing you will see it's the outputs tab and then the actions tab so the outputs tab means um, we have to add some outputs uh, into our projector uh, recalibration tool. As I'm connected to Pandora's box, I will um, I can see um, these outputs. Um, I can choose one of them or uh, both of them um, to add into um, the projector recalibration tool. Um, or I can enter um, the information manually into these fields. So um, what I wanted to do is to uh, recalibrate the second output. That's why I'm choosing output number uh, um, to uh, 16. So this is the um, device ID, 16. Um, and the resolution. So if you select these, um, the information will be filled uh, in these fields. But you can also enter them manually. Okay. Now I have an output. If I select it, uh, we are still in the outputs tab. I have to enter the home mesh. So what I have created and what I have warped in Pandora's box, um, so the editable mesh file I have used. Uh, it's called panel minus output two, and then you have to enter also the ending of the file, CMSH. 
Um, now we have also the information for the home mesh. Um, pattern and pattern delay uh, in milliseconds are per default on um, 300 milliseconds. Um, and um, we recommend to um, not enter a much smaller number than the default number. But um, you can change it, of course. Um, if um, in cases um, um, it can be necessary to increase the interval, um, for example, uh, if the processing capacity of the widget designer and Pandora's box machine is limited, or uh, the connection between both of them is slow, um, then you can change it. But um, it's re not recommended to enter a much smaller number than 300 milliseconds into this field. Um, what now we have to do is to choose our fibers. Um, so you remember the calibration link node. Um, this is our first node. Um, this is why it has the num ID number one. Um, and you remember I told you that I have connected the numbers 9, 10, 11, and 12. So what I can do is to um, select um, these um, connectors and add into um, my list. Um, I can also do a multi-selection. Just like that. Um, now I have also my fibers. So that's all what we have to do in our outputs tab. Um, if we have multiple outputs and we can add them again new and do um, the, the same process again for um, other projectors. Um, let's go to the action node. I have a question there for before you change to the yeah. actions, if, if you're okay with that. Um, yeah, of course. So the outputs, is it possible to use uh, these fibers again in a second or third output? Yes, um, actually, you know when, yes. Um, so let's go back. You remember the setup uh, with two projectors and the soft, soft edge uh, blend area. So if we have, uh, let's go back to my um, yeah, this one. Um, so um, if we have um, site setups like this, then we can share. Um, the fiber cables in the soft edge area. Um, but these are the only fiber cables that we can share. So um, that's very important um, to know. Um, of course, we can choose um, these two for the second output. If, we, if I had one, um, I could choose um, these two for the second output. Uh, but if they are not, um, actually if, if they are at these corners, then it's not uh, recommended to share them. Of course you can use them, but they are, um, it doesn't make sense to, to use these fibers because it's for another output. Um, yeah, that's the case you can share um, the fiber cables. Cool. Was it okay? Yeah, yeah. I think very much. Yeah. Okay, let's go back again to our projector recalibration tool. Uh, where was I? Actions. Okay, um, you can see here there are a lot of buttons. Um, First of all, before we uh, start with recalibrating, um, 
we have to calibrate it first or look, locate, uh, find the locations of the fiber cables. Um, that's why we should run the locate um, first. Um, but first of all, if we have multiple outputs here, we will see it also in the outputs um, list. Um, we have to select them. So this is why if I click on the locate button, I will get the arrow uh, no output selected. So I have to select this output and then um, click on locate. When I click on locate, um, Pandora's box will send, um, so actually the projector recalibration um, tool will create a canvas in Pandora's box. So let's do this here. It will create a, a folder, um, call it widget designer recalibration. And in this folder, it will, re, uh, it will create a canvas uh, for the test pattern um, in Pandora's box. So, and it will run the uh, test pattern. <coughs> Let's do it. So you see, here's the widget design a recalibration folder and the canvas um, for output 216. And it will run the um, test pattern to find out the fibers, uh, fi fiber locations. Any questions so far, Thomas? Yes, there was another question regarding the different uh, fiber cables and options there. I think that's a topic you go through uh, at a later point. Um, different fiber cables. Um... Yeah, options for fiber cables. I think that was a topic on your list, wasn't it? It wasn't, <laughs> um, oh. but... Uh, oh, sorry, I yeah. thought it was. <laughs> Maybe we can no. put it on your topic list. Okay, yeah, no, of course. Uh, and there's uh, another question coming in. Uh, can we do locate, so the locate process you just started, for multiple mm -hmm. outputs, I think, at the same time? Um, you can select multiple outputs and press the locate button, but it will um, do it after each other. So it will do the first output uh, and then the second output. Um, that's how it works. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Now, um, it's very helpful to have this log um, field so you can see the location is completed um, for the output um, 2.16. Now, um, when I want to check the located points um, to make sure that they are located correctly, I have to press the draw located points. So, yes, you will see the white points. Uh, I don't know why. The camera is not so sure. Um, the white located points are the fiber positions. So they're pretty much cool. Um, now, first of all, at the first time we are doing this calibration, we have to store these points as our home position or a home points. Um, so this is why we use the store home points. And they are stored. Now we check it again. Um, draw home points. They are cool. And now I can apply my home mesh. So when I click on apply home mesh, you have, um, it will create another editable mesh from 
the mesh I have created from the panel output to uh, because it will never uh, change my original editable mesh file. Um, so it will always um, create a copy of this file and then um, compare it to the changes and um, apply the changes to the um, uh, to this editable editable mesh file. Um, so it will never uh, change my original editable mesh file. Um, okay, now we are able to move the uh, panel a little bit uh, and to do a recalibrating. So let me. Okay, I've moved it a little bit. Um, now we can calibrate it again. So uh, for the recalibration, you can also use the locate button. It will again sending the uh, test pattern. Uh, while we're waiting for the recalibration, can I put some questions in? Of course. Cool. So there's one question. Does the recalibration process also works for complex 3D objects? No. Uh, it is still a 2D um, application. So um, we can use it for um, flat panels and curved screens. Um, but not for 3D objects. Okay, so also if I'm following a 2D workflow and have some, maybe maybe it's in uh, a house or something like that, uh, architectural mapping or something, is it usable on something like that? Actually, I'm not sure. Um, I think, um, we have to test it before I answer something wrong. Um, oh. If it's a 2D planner and looking like a house, it might work, but I'm not really sure about it. Okay. Uh, more questions or should we push them for later? Yeah, I'll okay. <laughs> So, and uh, another question, does it also work with multiple sub-meshes? Um, as we have to give the output uh, mesh file into the projector recalibration, um, if the sub-meshes, I think, um, if they are connected to each other, so like they are not moving, um, like you have a 3D object, um, another tree, sorry, um, a planar object with different pl um, planes, but um, they are holding together um, and you have created multiple surfaces, then it will make a copy of it. Um, so then you can use it, but in case they are um, moving um independently then not i think uh, that's um not really a correct way to use this yeah i think because it should be on the output yeah you're right okay completely right so uh, if uh, if you're changing 
inside this same warp or in, mm. uh, inside the same whole mesh file on different depth so they have the, the sub meshes have to change independently it's not working as long as you can uh can solve it by uh, warping the whole canvas then it should be possible and but then there's no point to use these sub meshes anymore so i think yeah. un, uh, the answer is more a no all right uh, another one why do you have to relocate if you have moved the projector? Uh, because we have to find out again the fiber cables positions. Um, we have still our home positions and this is our reference. So that's uh, what we have. And we will get another information again. Okay, where are these fiber cables again? Um, and then we will change the editable mesh file um, depending on this change that we the new information that we have all right okay um, okay uh, we push some more uh, for later okay um now i have i have moved the panel and then Locate it again, so like locate the um, fiber cables. Um, now we start, um, we, we show the uh, uh, located points. So they are completely okay in the correct position. Now I can use the apply recalibration button because um, I have I have my store points. Um, uh, my uh, I have stored my uh, home positions, um, so I don't need to store it again because I have it already. Uh, I just apply my uh, recalibration, and you will see it will it has um, showing first of all the first uh, editable mesh file, and then it jumped to the correct position and and created a. a and um and um use the changes um to um um uh, sorry um uh, to um to deform the editable mesh file again so now it's matching uh again to the panel so any questions to this recalibration process um yeah there's more question in comparison to the christie auto stack uh, feature um so I, I just read it for for you so we can think about how the answer can be there i see the calibration is also based on structure lighting scanner the benefit of Panora's box against Christie Auto Stack. To be honest, I have not much knowledge about Christie Auto Stack, so it's hard for me to answer that. Do you have a better uh, understanding me of either. that? No, me either. I didn't work with that. Sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we have to say sorry on that question, not being able to answer that. Uh, because we are very deep in the Panoras box side and not so much in the projector and uh, Chrissy auto stack feature. That was it for now. Okay, cool. Um, now you know how to um, uh, find out the home positions and how to recalibrate and how to use this projector recalibration tool. Um, Next time you uh, change the panel's position, you just have again to locate, first of all, the fiber cable's position and then check it with the button draw located points and then apply the changes to um, to the warp file with the button apply recalibration. Um, so it's actually for the first time that we store the home position. Um, if we 
move the panel multiple times, we do not have to store the home position again. Um, that's it to the trajectory calibration. <clears throat> of course, you can do it a little bit automatically. Um, <clears throat> so let's close this and do a custom script button. So, <clears throat> I can um, give the command um, via a custom script button. So I can just do this all, all these steps um, um, automatically with uh, one uh, pressing the uh, button. So if you do not have an operator uh, on site, um, you can use these commands and uh, make a um, cool um, interface for someone who doesn't know about this um, process and, and use these commands um, to make everything easier. So for recalibrate, okay, what we have to do is to give the um, output name, um, so which is also suggested if um, you have already um, done, uh, if you have added into into the output list. So um, I don't want to press it because um, then it will um, take a little bit time to yeah for for the test pattern. I just wanted to show you how easy it is um, with the uh, recalibration. Um, sorry. There is another um, locate and apply. Uh, so it will. Um, locate first of all and then apply the changes to the editable mesh so you don't have to um, give a second command to this. Um, then you can also remove it or if you want to um, check the draw point, uh, the, uh, the located points, um, Um, yeah, there it is. So let's test this one. So let's make the live a little bit easier to use um, these commands um, for the projector recalibration tool. Um, Another thing is, um, if you, uh, we can also send commands to the calibration link uh, node. So to stop the data or start the data or start integrate. Um, what you have to do is to write the node ID or node with the ID, with the correct ID. And um, you will find the list of all the um, um, actions that are possible with um, with this. So to disconnect it, uh, or to um, enable the output, or um, yeah, connect it again, changing the IP address. Um, so let's go to something we can uh, maybe write it down. Yeah, stop data. So when I click on it, you will see will just stopping uh, sending any any uh, kind of uh, signals to this node. Um, yeah, that's also very handy to use uh, if you want to um, do the whole process um, automatically. Um, but first of all, the first thing or um, the thing that is not really automatic is 
that we have to uh, work everything manually. Um, yeah, any questions to this? Um, no new questions. I just checked the um, the auto stack question, but uh, and I may have an answer, but we can push that to the end of the webinar, so not to interrupt you again. Okay. Um, cool. Um, then actually we will um, go back again to our um, PowerPoint presentation. So I just um, there is also everything in the help file. Um, um, we have also uh, summarized a short step-by-step -step list of what I want to go uh, through with you. Um, well, the first um, an important thing is to have the connection between Pandora's box and widget designer and the client and so on. I think everyone knows it. Um, and then the very important uh, point is to warp um, the editable mesh files in Pandora's box for each output you want to recalibrate um, and creating a um, calibration link input node and connect it to the input um, to the calibration link device with a correct IP address. <clears throat> yeah, connect Pandora's box um, to widget and then open the tools uh, projector recalibration tool and add um, the clients into this um, projector tool. Enter the warp mesh files, um, um, the names, the complete names with the ending of the files, um, and assign fiber cables to the output. Um, and then um, go to the action tab, select an output, and localize the fiber tabs. Uh, check accuracy uh, with the draw located points um, and store the home position. That's the first step. And that are the, these are the first steps that you have to do if you are doing it uh, the first time. Then, um, uh, after physical step, uh, set up uh, localize new fiber tips positions and then check the accuracy again and apply the recalibration. And that's it. Um, there might be some message, some error messages, some possible error messages that uh, you will get. Um, but um, this is when you, uh, when, for example, if the black pixel uh, and the bright um, if, if the black pixel is too bright or the white is too dark, um, then you will not uh, get a, um, um, you don't have a difference in between of them. So you, you wouldn't get correct signals to recalibrate it. Um, that might be a, a reason why it's not working. Um, or then there might be also too much side light uh, on screen that erase the, the black. Um, also in setups like uh, if you have two outputs, um, with two white uh, screens, um, and um, there are some reflections uh, from um, some edges uh, or something like this, then it might um, destroy the the recalibration. So you have to make sure that you do not have reflections. Um, also, poor cable transmission quality um, or bro broken calibration link board, uh, broken cables or too long cables, um, or ca cables are bent too much, um, or they are dirty and um, yeah, they are not cutted uh, correctly. Um, these are the error messages that you might get or yeah, that's 
I think everything I could tell you about this. Um, any questions to to this side? There are no new questions. I just wanted to add also uh, so the issues on that. Uh, I've seen projects where people have uh, restored their screen, so they painted it white and they left the fiber optics inside the screen, so all the ends were painted white. And that's, of course, a point when this feature isn't working anymore. <laughs> Right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, can I remember you to have some words about different fiber cables and options we have? Maybe we have something in the help file. I'm not sure about that. Um, we do not have something in the help file. Um, actually, I can tell you what I know about this. Um, we are using. Um, well, maybe I can show it to you. in the camera so actually it's a, a one millimeter uh, fiber cable it's very small because the connectors are also so small um, and um, it's um, I do not have any idea if they have any differences um, or we support different fiber cables but um, yeah they, they are probably different fiber cables, um, but I do not have any idea if they, um, if we support different from different manufacturers or uh, or so on. But what I know is um, that they should match the connectors, so they should be uh, one millimeter. Um, and um, yeah, should be uh, should transmit um, the light. Um, that's everything I know about that. Right. We can for sure provide some more information if you drop us an email uh, at uh, Pandora's uh, support dot Pandora's box at chrissydigital dot com. I will push the uh, these things in the chat so you have some links available. Um, yeah, and I researched a bit about the auto stack question earlier and found out that's a Christy twist feature. So, uh, this is a camera based cal auto calibration process. So, that's a bit different to what the recalibration uh, from which a designer is doing. So, the auto stack feature is about uh, finding the corrections from the, from from the first go, uh, and also the blend uh, the blend values and where to blend at which value. That's the auto uh, calibration. What we do here is a recalibration only. So you have to care manual about your warps and everything, and. Um, it's more about different pro projects. So in fixed installations or in a repetitive um, projects, so if, if you're uh, traveling around with the same uh, setup again uh, and, and you always have more or less same distances between, distances between projector and screen, uh, this is the, the point where the recalibration tool comes into, um, uh, into play. So uh, you put everything down, you hit the recalibrate button or the, the locate button, and uh, it takes some seconds and uh, your picture is back to where it has to be. Um, the benefit is, I think, uh, on, the, um, on the financial side. So I think, I may be wrong, but I think the fiber, uh, optics um, is a bit cheaper than the camera based auto uh, auto stack or auto alignment tools there are more auto alignment tools uh, available uh, with Christie 2 this is called Christie Mystique this is the the uh, top one 
also available to use it directly with Pandora's box or a certain projectors. We have a webinar about that too. Um, so these are the camera auto calibration tools. And today, this is about the fiber optics and the recalibration tool. Thank you, Thomas. I have to add one more thing. Um, if you want to use the projector recalibration with a uh, calibration link, then you have to make sure that you are using Widget Designer version 6 or upper uh, version 6.1, um, 0.0 or 0.1, um, and the Pandora's Box version 6.1.3 or higher. And you have to make sure that you have the um, .NET version uh, point, uh, 4.8 or higher. So, yeah. That's it. Right. Thank you. Cool. I hope you enjoyed it and you can use it and have fun with it. Thank you for listening. Thank you and see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.